Greetings fellow Cigar Box Guitar Luthiers, players, fans of the Cigar Box Guitar, and fans of independent music and musicians. Moses here from Burrell Guitars. Today I'm going to do what is the beginning of what I hope to be a series of discussions about Cigar Box Guitar neck construction. I like to approach uh, construction of Cigar Box Guitar necks from the headstock through to the back of the heel. And the reason I do that is because I like to begin my measurements from the headstock and work my way towards the heel. It allows me to consider the scale length, the length of the box, and the string attachment setup that I go I'm going to use. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before I begin construction on any type of cigar box guitar neck, I like to determine uh, one of three ways that I'm going to approach it. One is am I going to use a scarf joint? Am I going to use a lap joint? Or am I going to use a half lap joint? Half lap joint is my terminology. So when I show this to you, uh, you people who are woodworkers out there, if you know a correct name for this, just go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments below. Okay. This is what I call a standard lap joint. This is achieved by cutting out a 1 8 to 1 4 inch notch in the headstock. This is a standard 1 by 2 inch piece of poplar board. And then taking that cut out, gluing it to the bottom, forming this shape you see here. Now I have personally committed to four inches for all my headstocks. That gives me enough room for the tuners, gives me enough room to add string retainers, and it gives me enough room to uh, add my string break angle off the nut. So that's the lap joint approach. Okay, using this finished bill, I call this the half lap joint approach. It's where after I cut the notch from the top, I don't glue it to the back. I just let the back stay one continuous piece. Now this is shaped because when I shape the neck, I sort of carve it down so it has the appearance of the lap joint but there is no piece attached to the back hence the half lap joint finally and I don't do this very often but occasionally I will go with a scarf joint when I use a scarf joint, I tend to break my four inch rule. I like to add an extra one half to one inch to the length of the headstock when I'm creating a scarf joint, simply because I like a good lengthy but clean break angle off the nut because a scarf joint eliminates the need for string retainers. Scarf joints also work well when you're using such as I have here a threaded rod for, for a nut. So take in consideration four inches for my headstock length. I typically go with a 23 inch scale length. A 23 inch scale length usually turns out to be approximately 15 and one fourth of an inch to the end of my fingerboard. A uh, 23 inch scale length usually gives me 17 or 18 frets. So that's four inches here, another 15 and a half inches to here, and of course, this is where the box will stop at the uh, lid. 
And then as you can see here, I have my scale length marked. And sometimes when I'm building next, I haven't already determined which box I'm going to use. So if I know I'm going to use a dead pan approach, which means I'm going to cut the neck to the length of the inside rear of the box, which also means that I'm either going to go with a string through body type setup, or I'm going to use a hinge attached to the back of the box or in a case where I'm going to run the neck through the length of the box and stick out the back an inch or so and go with a string through neck approach and as you notice I have two lines here for two different lengths of cigar boxes that I've already considered for use with this bill. So it just leaves me open to uh, adjustments based on uh, preference of boxes. Uh, one final point I wanted to make about fingerboards and scale length. As I stated earlier, I typically always go with a 23 inch scale length, but scale length does not limit fingerboard length. Now in this case, you look closely at that dotted line, that's the mark where the zero fret is gonna be. This is gonna be a zero fret bill. So when I attach the fingerboard flush with the front of where that joint was cut, it just allows me to line up the zero fret. Then this one will slightly overlap where the box will meet the fingerboard. So that's why I say the scale length does not particularly dictate the fretboard length. As you can see in this bill, this is also a 23 inch scale length, but I overlapped the fretboard by nearly four frets. And that's just a matter of style. Sometimes I just like to, the look of that. Or I especially like that gap between the top of the box and the fretboard. But once again, still 23 inch scale length. Okay folks, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you've liked what you've seen, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember, every Tuesdays I will upload either a building tips or a playing tips video. Don't forget Fridays, I will upload a one song concert. One song concerts features me playing an original song on the cigar box guitar. Once again, thanks for watching and remember, it's all about the box.